Dr. Eric Van Zant. I'm a ruminant nutritionist. I've been here at the University of Kentucky for about 23 years now doing research mostly centered around nutrition of grazing and forage fed beef cattle. Um, in recent years, I've gotten in, very interested in how temperament affects uh, growth and efficiency of cattle. Um, a lot of this work originally started in Australia several years ago, decades ago actually, um, where they discovered that there are certain characteristics related to temperament in cattle that are pretty directly related to how efficiently they grow, how rapidly they grow, and, and some other important characteristics such as uh, health, things related to health or immunological responses and those kind of things. And so we got interested in, in looking at some of those things. And as a nutritionist, my interest is a little bit different than a lot of the other folks that are doing some of this work. Uh, obviously, a lot of the interest is in breeding and selection, right? So let's select animals that are, that are more docile, less temperamental, uh, for lots of different reasons usually just because they're easier to work with and handle and you don't have to worry about them you know, being dangerous and those kind of things. But with this added dimension, right, that we know that these characteristics are also related to how fast they grow, how much they eat, as a nutritionist, that piqued my interest because I got to thinking that, well, if these animals are growing differently, maybe they have different nutrient requirements. Maybe we should be feeding them differently. So we've done a number of studies where we're really trying to uh, take advantage of some of those, uh, some of those differences. Um, so uh, yeah, the cattle that we've got here right now, uh, we, we actually are looking at a few different things uh, with these guys. So uh, this, this particular barn, I've got, and I'm going to have to do math here real quick. Um, We've got about 72, 72 head of cattle in this barn, and then we've got another similar barn just to the north of us. So these guys are from two different sources. Uh, part of them are homegrown calves that we raised uh, from our cows here on the, the station here. The other part of the calves that are here we brought up from the Princeton Research Station. Um, so we've got two different sources of calves that we've got you know, known histories and backgrounds on. Um, additionally, um, we're looking at uh, how they respond differently to different grazing scenarios. So all of these cattle uh, in the spring, we had them out on, on pastures here, uh, and did grazing studies with them. And so uh, the big thing there is looking at, at the effect of uh, endophyte in fescue on their growth. And so they grazed all summer either on, on toxic, what we call toxic endophyte infected pastures or non-toxic pastures. Um, and then uh, about a month ago, we brought them in and we're transitioning them now over to uh, finishing diets. So these would be, you know, typical feedlot kind of diets. And our interest there is in kind of following these cattle through um, and seeing how treatments that we applied during the grazing phase, as well as their temperament, influence their performance on, uh, on finishing diets in, in, in this scenario. Um, so these guys are now up on, yeah, full feed. Um, we're feeding them a, mostly, uh, uh, it's a corn-based corn diet, so it's, uh, the grain portion of this is half high moisture corn and half cracked corn. So we put, in the fall each year, we'll put up high moisture corn in the silos that we've got out here, and then we'll blend that with, with just regular cracked corn. Uh, there's about 10% corn silage in here is the roughage fraction, and then we're feeding a uh, bit of uh, distiller's grains in here as well, for mostly for the protein and, and some additional energy in there as well. Um, so what we found uh, over the years as far as the, the temperament related aspects, um, well, let me back up, yeah, I guess just a second. So when I'm talking about temperament, that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. We've reduced it down to some things that we can measure very quickly without interfering with the flow of cattle when we're working them um, and that have uh, surprisingly, I guess in some cases, kind of worked out to be pretty well related to, to characteristics of interest. 
So what we're doing when we're working these guys, we run them through the squeeze chute, and we've got a set of infrared sensors set up right outside of the squeeze chute, and so we measure how fast they come out of the squeeze chute when we're processing them. Um, we call that chute exit velocity. And initially, so a lot of the initial work that was done with that found differences between, you know, pr in, in pretty extreme kind of cases, right? So uh, Brahmin influenced cattle, for example, are pretty well recognized to be very temperamental. Um, and a lot of the early work showed that with them, yeah, right, these, these high exit velocities were associated with slower gains, uh, lower feed intakes, those kinds of things. When we started doing this work, there hadn't been much work done with British cross cattle, in particular Angus cattle. Um, and the expectation was mostly they're docile enough that we're probably not going to see a whole lot. And that turned out not to be the case. So even in a set of, you know, uh, pretty calm calves, you walk through them and you don't see anything in there that's, you know, really excitable. They all seem pretty calm. When we measure the exit velocity coming out of the chute and we follow those cattle through in, in finishing scenarios, we find that, in fact, uh, those fast exit velocity calves gain less, eat less feed. Uh, we've done some work on immunological status, and, and they're different immunologically. They're just physiologically different beasts. And so our interests now are kind of in uh, identifying maybe other factors that can we, me we can measure that are associated with temperament and trying to look at, at ways that we might be able to exploit that, right? Can we feed them a different diet? Um, uh, you know, maybe they need, a, you know, a different uh, energy density or protein density in their diet. Maybe there are different feed additives that work better for, for certain classes of cattle than others. Um, so, s some of the additional measures that we're looking at that are related to temperament are just uh, things like their general activity in the pen. When we're not working with them, are these cattle more or less active? What are they doing? So, one of the ways that we're getting at that is uh, we've got this set up in this particular barn where we've got these RFID uh, antennas set up. These are actually UHF, ultra high frequency RFID antennas that are reading uh, these uh, white, uh, ta well, tags with the black tape on them that, that are here. Um, and so we're picking up things like how much time are they spending at the feed bunk, how active are they just moving back and forth and that kind of thing. Additionally, we've got a, uh, in, in these guys, we've got a commercial ear tag. Uh, this one's marketed by a company out of Europe that's really targeted toward dairy cows. Um, we're interested in, in looking at, yeah, how, how useful the information might be that we're getting out of it as applied to growing beef cattle. So these little orange tags that are in their ears, um, those are connected to an antenna that's a away, ways away from here. Uh, we can use these out in pasture. They've got sufficient read distance. We can pick them up from quite a ways away. All that data gets downloaded, downloaded to the cloud. I don't know, some server in Europe somewhere. Um, but we've got, I can pull up on my phone uh, or computer. I can access that data anytime. And that, that's giving us at least reported, what they're reporting are things like feeding time, time active, how much time they spend ruminating. Um, we're working on validating some of that. Uh, right now, it looks like it's not too accurate for beef cattle. Um, one of the other real important things that we're interested in getting from these ear tags is potentially whether they're sick, right, how well they're feeling. Um, they send a signal on that, and again, yeah, it doesn't look like that's calibrated too well for these animals. So we're hoping through our research to, to enhance that and make, you know, make these technologies work better and, and come up with useful strategies for producers to use in those situations.